RimWorld, a beautiful procedurally generated survival game where you can butcher your enemies, eat them, and use their skin to create pants, shirts, and jackets. It has a lot of depth and nuance to learn, and can be a tricky one to get your head around. Hi, my name's Bloody Drongo, and I've played thousands of hours of RimWorld, and I've made many hundreds of mistakes. And now I want to share with you the wisdom I've learned so you don't have to fall into the same pitfalls that I have. We got a prison break. Oh, they're both going for it. Not on my watch, suckers. They're going for my stockpile, boys. They're going to go get some weapons. Get him down. Come on. Oh, shit. Not the orbital beam targeter. No. 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 Oh! <laughs> Right, this is a no frills guide focused on beginner level gameplay and will be followed up by an intermediate and advanced strategy and tips guide in the coming weeks, months, and maybe years. The goal of this video is to make you, yes, you, a better RimWorld player in just 10 minutes time. So let's go. Tip one, don't be afraid of using melee. Many new players find it somewhat intimidating to send their pawns in to fight tooth and nail against the enemy and instead prefer to fight at a distance. The reality, however, is that melee in RimWorld is an extremely powerful tool and usually results in a lesser chance of instant death in the early game than ranged attacks. This is because it is extremely unlikely for clubs and knives to do enough damage to destroy a heart or brain, which are rumored to be very important for living. Unlike standard ranged weapons, such as a normal quality short bow, for example, which can one hit through a simple helmet with a good roll. You can also manipulate melee engagements a lot easier by baiting enemies into your buildings, allowing your pawns to fight in odds that favor them. Even with less melee skill, numbers will win every time. A very effective melee tactic is the 3 to 1 melee bottleneck, where you line up three of your pawns to face an open doorway. The enemies will filter into the gap and this limits the number of enemies that can engage your pawns while all three of yours can hit them. This is a great way to engage melee enemies such as infestations and manhunting animals that outnumber you and maximize your chances of winning. So be on the cutting edge of hand-to-hand -hand combat and bludgeon your way to victory. Tip number two. Take note of the type of soil you're planting your crops in. In the bottom left of your game, when you mouse over a square, you'll notice that there is a descriptor of what it is, along with your movement speed and its fertility, described as a percentage. For example, regular soil has 100% fertility, which is the baseline. Stony soil has 70% fertility, which means that your crops will only ever be able to grow at 70% percent of their effective speed, taking longer for the crops to reach harvest. So if you like eating and staying alive like I do, then look out for dark areas of rich looking soil. These have a fertility of 140% giving you food much faster. If you're new and having trouble visually identifying good areas to grow, Put down that soil sample kit. Don't worry, there's an easier way. Down in the bottom right, you'll see a sprout icon. This icon, when clicked, toggles the fertility overlay. This will give you a color-coded map of the fertility on your tile. Bright green being rich soil, light green being regular soil, and amber being stony soil. Areas without any color at all are areas where the floor type cannot support any planting of crops whatsoever. So whip out your green thumb and get dirty. Tip three, plan for friendly fire. Well, maybe not plan for, but plan to avoid it. Friendly fire occurs when you're targeting something or someone with a ranged weapon, which is greater than five tiles away from your pawn. However, you can avoid this entirely by keeping your colonists within five tiles radius of each other. This way they can shoot over the shoulders of their allies with no risk. 
It's not always possible to do this, especially if you're kiting enemies, so consider equipping melee or bait pawns with shield belts to allow them to deflect some shots. Just be mindful of area of effect weapons, such as inferno cannons, grenades, molotovs, and doomsday rocket launchers. Sometimes putting all of your eggs in one basket ends up with a ruined basket and a lot of broken eggs. Consider combining these tactics with tip number one to form some truly deadly and effective defensive setups. Tip four. Boom, you've been mid-episode ambushed. And I'm coming in here to say that if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Yeah, subscribe. Subscribe. How about you even turn on that notification bell too? And if you're really enjoying the video, well, no, no Jimmy, take your hands out of your pants. I didn't mean... Any, thank you. Yes, anyway, if you're really enjoying the video, you can find a link down to my Patreon below in the description of this video forward slash bloody drongo, and you can help support me there so I can keep making more videos to entertain and educate you. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get back into it. Ambush over. Tip 4. Set up manual priorities for jobs. From your work tab, Tick the manual option to give yourself the ability not just to elect if a pawn will do a task, but at what priority in relation to others they will do it. This may seem scary and a tad overwhelming at first, but don't worry, RimWorld has much more terrifying things. Plus, setting this up properly at the start saves you so much time and micromanaging later on. The main points to understand is that you can rank jobs between 1 and 4 priority, 1 being the highest and 4 being the lowest priority. You can also remove the numbers altogether to disallow a job from a pawn completely. Now, I know you might be thinking, hold up, if I rank multiple jobs at the same number, how do I know what my pawn is going to do? Well, fear not, because it's very simple. Your pawn will resolve and complete tasks prioritized from left to right, meaning that if you have all of your tasks set at one priority, your pawn will do firefighting first and research last. But don't do that. Seriously, don't. Uh, just, just be smart about it, okay? Take control of your game and show the pawns how it's going to be. Tip number five, queuing actions. Okay, so you want to disregard everything I've just taught you in tip number four and be a micromanager, breathing down your pawn's neck, but you're tired of doing everything in one click at a time? Life is too short. So simply hold down the shift key and issue your right click orders as you would normally. And voila, your pawn will have a to-do list to keep them busy for the rest of the day and all your worries will melt away. Disclaimer, may or may not actually cause your worries to melt away. Drongo Enterprises Priority Limited does not take any kind of responsibility or liability should this be the case. Any loss of limb or organ death is by the result of the consenting parties involved. Alright friends, that's all we have for you this time around. Hopefully you learned something and maybe even had a little cheeky laugh. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, and if you've got any questions, let me know in the comment section down below, or alternatively, you can come and visit me live over on Twitch. I stream over there four nights a week, a variety of different games, including RimWorld. So you can come and get the answers fresh from the source. Make sure to check out the description for all of my links, where to find me, social media, all that good stuff. And until next time, everybody, happy rimming. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.